don't forget that this tutorial is part of a series of tutorials which you can access on our YouTube playlist or alternatively if you would like to you can purchase the whole course on Udemy there should be a link to the YouTube playlist and a link to our Udemy course which should always provide the best price in the video description before we start the project we are going to need to actually start a project but in addition to that we are going to need to set up the virtual environment so I'll just take you through that process now here on Windows there are a few additional steps than if you were to participate in the Mac setup guide so I'll take you through those and try and simulate some of the problems that you might have to try and help and support you through this process if you did miss the setup guides at the start of this course you would have missed the process of installing extensions in preparation for development now the extensions that we have installed first of all we installed python and then we installed uh, night owl which is just a, a ui interface which is of course completely optional and we installed a rough for linting and formatting as well as uh, installing the sqlite extension because we are going to initially be using the default sqlite database in django so this will allow us to inspect the database okay so if you don't install these extensions don't worry you can still follow along of course but there may be some instances where you might see some automatic or automation in the code that i type or potentially you will see some underlines to indicate errors etc or i might press save and the data or the actual code will be automatically formatted so these are the type of things you might see and miss out on if you don't install these extensions all the tutorials in this course will be demonstrated on a Mac but if you do smell and you are using Windows I will provide additional guidance so don't worry about that the first step whether you're on Windows or Mac is to create a project folder so it's entirely up to you where you create your project folder of course I think I'm just going to place a new folder on my desktop so I'm going to add a new folder on my desktop let's just call this e-commerce And I'll open that folder. This is now my folder on the left hand side, and we can now start the project. Right, so first task is to create a virtual environment. We need to select terminal and a new terminal. There is a shortcut for this, which you can utilize on the Mac keyboard. It's control and then the, key, the button above it on the keyboard. So the title um, key. So you press that, press that together, that will open and close the terminal. Right, so we're going to need to create a virtual environment. Now we are working within the virtual environment. Let's think of a virtual environment as a self contained directory that contains Python interpreter and its standard library. It allows us to create an isolated environment for our Python projects. Now I appreciate that you might not be familiar with virtual environments. I'm going to show you how to create so we can get started with our projects. But this is a way to isolate the packages and dependencies that we install for our project which will prevent conflicts between different projects by keeping all of our dependencies for each project separate i have now moved across to windows so we can see the preparation for windows creating a new virtual environment right so the reason why i created tutorials one for mac and one for windows because typically there is more issues with getting this started on windows than there is with Mac now one problem you might uh, I've tried to simulate this problem one problem you might have is when we start to try to create a virtual environment is it says Python was not found so that just indicates the fact that Python is probably not installed correctly so just make sure that you've downloaded the correct version of Python for your particular hardware on your machine and then sometimes it's just a case of restart in Visual Studio code maybe you've installed and had it open so hasn't quite taken all the settings so just restart Visual Studio code sometimes that can help too if you continue to have a problem well I do recommend maybe switching to HTML and CSS no please leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you and try and help you because this is the most frustrating part of the development process trying to get started right so everything is working okay on this machine in actual fact version so we do have 12 python 3.12 installed right so let's go ahead now and start to build our virtual environment so back to the command that we're using 
previously, or I didn't actually introduce it to you. So let's create a new virtual environment by typing in Python and then the M switch to then run virtual environment, create the virtual environment and install it in the VMV folder. And of course you can change that folder name at the end here to anything that you like. With that done, we can now go ahead and start the virtual environment. So for that in Windows, we need to activate. So I type in dot space VEMV and then I pressed tab then and that finished the command for me. So I'm looking for the scripts folder. Inside of that, I'm looking for activate. So this is the second problem that you might have. There are a few different solutions to overcome this problem of initiating the virtual environment in Windows. You can just copy and paste this into uh, chat GBT and it should give you some basic instructions. Now remember that if you don't have administrative privileges on your machine, maybe it's a work machine, then potentially you aren't going to be able to perform this task. So let's go for the simple solution first. If you don't own the machine, maybe it's a work machine, then what you can do is run the scope process and that would try and bypass the execution policy temporarily to try and get it started. So that's one potential solution that might work for you. The second option is we need to use this search here. Let's uh, find the PowerShell, Windows PowerShell. We're gonna right click on that and run as administrator. So I've typed in power into the search bar at the bottom, right clicked on Windows PowerShell, run as administrator. So yes, and now we can go ahead and add some commands. I can maybe zoom in a bit. You can see the set execution policy, the minus scope, current user, minus execution policy, remotely remote signed. So that's what you need to, and that's what you need to type in. Right, so once you've typed that in, press enter. I think you'll be asked a question. So we're just going to use the capital Y for, or actually a yes to all. And there we go. So what we're gonna to need to do now after that is just restart Visual Studio Code. So I'm just gonna close that down. Restart Visual Studio Code. It will open back up into the project folder. Let's get back into the terminal. I'm gonna type in CLS to clear all that. Press up and down on the keyboard to bring up the previous commands. Let's see if we can activate now. And we can now see that we can activate the virtual environment. It indicates here in the left-hand side of the prompt, we're now within and working within, sorry, the virtual environment. Now, if you are new to virtual environments, this is, can take a little bit of practice to get used to. And to remember, of course, that every time you open up your project, you need to make sure that you are inside of your virtual environment. That is where we're going to install all the packages and dependencies for our application. Like I said before, we're going to create an environment, virtual environment, we're going to isolate all the packages and dependencies for our application. So it doesn't cause any conflicts with other projects that we work on the same machine. If you do have any other problems or issues, then please leave a comment and we'll try and get back to you. That's pretty much it for the Windows exclusive. Everything else that we perform, like I said, will be in the Mac environment and it should be generic for both Windows and Mac. If at any point we do anything that's Mac specific, I will show you the same operation in Windows.